Hello, welcome or welcome back to my channel. Today's video is me doing my May reading wrap up along with my June TBR. I feel like I say it in every one of these videos, but these are just my favorite to film and favorite to watch. I mean, reading content in general, but seeing everyone's wrap up along with getting kind of book inspiration on what people want to read, I just love it. So let's just dive right in. So I had seven books on my May TBR and I'm proud to announce that I have read six of those seven books and I am in the middle of my seventh book now. So I'm gonna go through the books that I read in order that I read them. First book that I read this month was My Year of Rest and Relaxation. This book was nothing like I've ever read before. It's considered vintage fiction, which I didn't even know was a thing. It's following this young, thin, beautiful, recent Columbia graduate where she, you would just think that she has everything, right? She has this perfect world. Look at her. She's gorgeous. But in the reality, she's lost both of her parents in college. She has this very toxic relationship with this sort of older guy. And essentially, it's just crumbling down on her. She's overwhelmed. She wants to take a year off and sleep it away. She wants to sleep for a year and come out of it rejuvenated, her soul healed, ready to take on the world. So that's what she sets out to do. I don't want to say too much more than that. It's just, it's not what I expected it to be and I didn't expect to love it as much as I did. So four stars, great book, definitely recommend. The next book that I read is the first book in the Magnolia Park series. Guys, you either love it or you hate it. And I'm going to tell you right now, I love this book. It was five stars for me. I loved it. I feel like the way people describe this book is always like Gossip Girl meets High Society London. It really is. It's a British Gossip Girl. You have, again, High Society. You have this group of friends, kind of this found family where they all met each other in boarding school and like kind of just being in the same area, kind of like know of each other and they just... Ugh, the drama. This book particularly is following Magnolia and BJ, like you're getting that duo POV. But I believe the next book in the series, Daisy Hates, that's that like first Daisy Hates book. You're getting Christian and Daisy's POV of the same story that's told in this book. So I feel like that'd be so interesting. But gosh, you just, you get it all. And I feel like if you go into this book not looking for relationship advice and <laughs> like thinking this is the type of life that you should be living, you'll love this book. But if you're looking for this like oh my god, this is just so toxic. I would never be in a relationship like that. I would never stand for that. No, I don't support the behavior. But I love the story. I love the rich people drama. That's what I'm here for. Five stars. I cannot recommend this book enough. The next book I read was Dear Erin by Mariana Safada. This is my second book of hers. The first one I read was All Roads Lead Here, which I love. And that is like a top, top book for me. It was an easy five stars. The slow burn in this, that's what she's known for. Now this is following Ruby and Erin, and essentially Ruby is in her like low 20s, and I think Erin is like upper 20s, like maybe eight years difference, something like that, six years, I don't know. But Ruby has signed up for this program where you're essentially pen pals with military people that are deployed. So she's emailing back and forth with Erin, and essentially it's like the first half of the book is told in emails like I don't know how much you can like see in here but you're told like in email form and then halfway through it switches where like it's kind of a normal book that you'd be used to. It was so good like you're really seeing these people just open up to each other and have like this I want to say like more relatable type of relationship because I feel like a lot of people this day and age are meeting people online and you have this like chatting relationship before you're like ever able to meet in person and that's where I think a lot of people may be able to relate to this book as far as like the way their emails are written how they slowly get to know each other I love this book I gave it four stars because the ending to me I was just like what is this like is this really complete is this satisfying to me and honestly, it wasn't. So I gave this four stars, maybe even four and a half. I do recommend this book because it was a page turner. I could not put it down. And obviously it was so easy to read because of the email format. I just was like blowing through it. Definitely recommend. The next book I read, Happy Place by Emily Henry. 
Guys, this book has been everywhere ever since it came out. It's been talked about nonstop. I bought it nearly immediately. I saw it at Target. It was beautiful. I had to pick it up. I wanted to read it so bad, but I knew I had to be in the right mindset and I'd been reading so much fantasy books. So I didn't want to go into this knowing I wanted a fantasy book and then I'd just be kind of disappointed. So after reading Magnolia Parks and Dear Erin, I was like, I am in a romance mood for sure. So that's when I picked this up. When I first finished it, I gave it four stars. But now that like it's settled, I realize it is definitely a five star read for me because anyone that will let me talk about this book I will talk nonstop. I cannot shut up about it. You have to go into this knowing it's not just a romance. And that's why I try to tell anyone that would like to read it. It's half romance, half life, half friendship. This book, oh my god. The two main characters are Harriet and Wynn and they have known each other for like 10 years. They've been together for 10 years and they were engaged. And they're the part of this friend group of like six people where every year they go to this certain cottage in Maine. It's just, it's a, it's a tradition, right? It's part of the journey. And they ended their engagement, but they didn't tell their friends. And their friends didn't know. And they weren't supposed to both be on this trip that year, but it was just so important that they were both there. So Harriet shows up. Wynn is there. They have to fake date, so to speak, but they're supposed to be engaged. So it's like, they're fake fiancés. And through that, you're having this duo timeline, so to speak, of the like current timeline along with this kind of past with Harriet and Wynne, like them meeting, them, them getting to know each other and dating and life. But in the present time, you're also getting all of these just friendship journeys and the core group of girls and what they've like gone through with each other. And now that like, they're older, like they're near 30 or something. The reality of life is so hard, especially like gaining and keeping, maintaining friendships when they're all going in different directions. And so it's just a very raw, real book while you also get the giddiness of a romance plot. Obviously, I can't shut up about this book. Five stars. Everyone should read this. I think it's a perfect summer read as well. Like it's set at a lake house. Small town, lake, house, oh my god. I'm obsessed. I'm obsessed with this. <laughs> Please read this book. Next up is Emily Wilde's Encyclopedia of Fairies. Let me just say that I started this book a couple times. Like I would read a chapter and read a chapter of another book and see what kind of just got my interest more. The other book always won. But recently I picked this back up and I completed it and I thoroughly enjoyed it. Now there's a video on this because I did like a 24 hour reading challenge where this book, the next book, and the book after that is all talked about in that so I don't want to talk too much about it. But I gave this three and a half stars. I really enjoyed it and I think the biggest thing I will say about it is that it's not revolutionary but it's enjoyable. Like once I got into it, I was into it and I would say this book is the epitome of a Disney movie, a Disney book, where adults will love it, younger like kids would enjoy it, teens would enjoy it. It's a wholesome story. Yes, there's this kind of sort of like romance subplot going on with the characters, but it's really this journey of Emily finishing her encyclopedia of fairies. Like she's writing this encyclopedia of fairies and there's this last group called the Hidden Ones that she really needs to learn more about in order to complete it. So she goes on that journey, her colleague surprises her saying we're doing this together and it's really just that's the plot, right? Like that's the adventure, that's the main story and I feel like it just is the epitome of a Disney story. If this was made into a movie, I would watch it. It'd be so whimsical and amazing and enchanting. Ultimately, it's just not, I can't stop thinking about this. It's just a good book. I did enjoy it and I would recommend it to those that would be interested in this type of story. The next book that I read also in that video so I won't talk too much about it is The Atlas Six. This was definitely an anticipated read for me for a while just based on the like booktubers that I follow. I had picked this up again before where I'd read like the first chapter and see like what catches my attention the most. When I first picked this up my brain could not compute. It's an academic 
type of writing where I'm like, I need such an easy read right now and my brain is not computing large words. I don't know if that was just my first experience with it because the second time I picked it up, granted, I was also listening to the audiobook as I read it, so that helped, but it was such an easier read the second time around. Like once I restarted it, I was like, wow, this is so much easier to get into and everything. I would give this four and a half stars. It's so close to five stars and honestly, when I let it sit with me, maybe it could be. I don't know how to explain it because I really, I really love this book. It's following six characters who essentially have these abilities, like these magical abilities, and five of those six will be admitted to this Alexandrian elite society. You're getting all the POVs of these six characters, which is at first kind of intimidating to think about, but it's so well written and so easy to understand and follow and especially with the audiobook because they had different narrators like female and male that kind of just helped break it up that first year only five of six will make it beyond that only five of six will be actually initiated into the society so this first year is what we're following here and then there's a second book out and then the third book is on its way so I don't want to talk too much about it because like I said, I talked more about it in that video, but I really, really, really enjoyed this book and I definitely recommend it to people, but I definitely recommend listening to the audiobook if you can. I just had it on my Libby app through my library, but do that. Do that because I think that'll make it just so much easier to follow and enjoy The Atlas Six. Definitely recommend We'll Be Buying the Second Book. Okay, now it's all the books that I completed in May. I do want to throw this in because I do mention it in that next video as well, the 24 hour challenge, but I've started the final book on my May TBR list, which is A Court of Mist and Fury. It's the second book in the Akatar series. So I can't really say anything about this because it's the second book and I don't want to spoil anything from the first, but all I can say is I really enjoyed the character development so far in this and character actions in this book make me think back on the first book and think like, wait, what did that really mean then in the first book? Or what, are, what was that character really trying to do and say in that first book? If this is how they're acting now, or this is what they're saying now, it's so good. And you're getting introduced to more characters, more courts. I'm enjoying this book. Okay, I just went and got all the books that I wanna read in June. These are essentially the books that I'm gonna try to pick from. But who knows because I'm a mood reader. But I want to get through these very summery books in June and July just because the vibes are there, right? That's what we want. Okay, so I'm not going to go through the plot of these because I like to go into them more blind and I'd rather discuss the book after I've read it and be able to talk more on it rather than just like reading the synopsis on the back. First up is The Roughest Draft. I mean, hello. One, it's pretty. Two, they're literally in a pool. Can't get more summer than that. I can't believe I haven't read this book, Beach Read by Emily Henry and After Happy Place. I just heard so many good things about this book, so definitely looking forward to this. This is a priority. Then I have Once Upon a Broken Heart. I've been meaning to get to this and then I just haven't. So I've gone through other books that I was really anticipating. This is next up. This will be a nice like kind of fantasy breakup if that's the mood that I'm in. Very excited about this one. Then I have The Spanish Love Deception. Now I know that this is set primarily kind of New York to Spain. So I figured Spain is kind of summery and on the front like she just looks very like summery vibes. So I feel like this is just gonna be a good romance book to read. Next up is literally Summer in the title called One Italian Summer. I do know what this is primarily about but I think this is just gonna be so good. Like one, this cover is Stunning, but two, Italy, summer, the vibes are there. Then I have the second Bridgerton book. I don't know what it is. Like, I got this, and I have to just be in the mood for it, but it's this kind of who loved me. I loved the second season of Bridgerton. When I started it, I binged it straight through. I loved it. And so that scene, though, Bridgerton in general, gives very summery vibes. Like, <sighs> I don't know how to describe it, but I mean, if you watch the show, it gives it. Like the sunny, I just, yeah. 
I think I'll really enjoy this once I just get into it. And I feel like it's going to be a very quick read because that's how I felt about the first book. And then just to throw it in there, I obviously want to finish this, A Court of Mist and Fury. It's on the list. I'm already started it. Like, it's there. Okay, that completes my May reading wrap up along with my June TBR. Can I just say how much I love the book community? Like, I really don't enjoy social media, like the toxicity of it, but the book community across all platforms is just so creative and inspiring and calming, and it's just, it's so much serotonin. To the point that I finally created a bookstagram. I do not like Instagram. I don't like the toxicity of just people posting their life on Instagram and everyone's comparing and it's about likes and comments and followers. I hate it. I hate it so much. But every book account I have found, I'm just like, this is so, I, it makes me happy. And I'm always posting my pictures that I take and want to post on Pinterest. Like that's just my non-toxic platform that I just love. Who cares if anyone looks at it? It's just a board that I can share all the photos that I take. And I do post book photos, aesthetic things there. But I really wanted a place like Bookstagram. Like I just really love that community. So I did it. It's called Bookmarked by JC. And I essentially came up with that name because I obviously wanted a book term in my name together and the username but when I'm on Pinterest or the internet or just anything I come across that I love and I want to save I save it I screenshot it I save it for later so that I can look back on it and I'm like oh I want to like I save some picture I know from an outfit or maybe it's food or whatever it is I save it for later and so that's that term in my head of like you're bookmarking something that's where it came from I want my account to be like that for anyone else so that's where it came from I also created a separate Pinterest account for it because I like my Pinterest account that I have but I want like the book thing to be separate because I have my life Pinterest that's just like hair makeup outfits food whatever and like my life of a board and my future you know like all the things and then I wanted like a book one where I can make boards of like if I'm like, oh my god, I love the Atlas 6 aesthetic. I can make a board dedicated to this type of aesthetic. Which is like so like dark academia magic. I love it. That's the idea behind it. So I created that. I put it out today. I created my first post. I don't know, it's just so fun. It's like a passion project for me. I think this is like the direction I really want to go with like my content. And I love it. I think this is just what makes me the happiest. So I'm going to have everything linked below and everything in case you're interested and want to follow it. This is so awkward. I'm <laughs> like plugging your stuff. But there it is. It's out there. With that, I'm finally done talking. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next one.